Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. Italian battleships seem to be all the rage recently, so we're not going to be focusing on any of those in today's video. This is in fact something of a mystery celebrity guest replay. Hang on a minute, this is two brothers. It's Flambas, isn't it? No, 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 this is not Flambas. Although I'm fairly sure that if you're a World of Warships fan, you've probably seen today's Atago player, Sputnik 5, under a different name, on his own YouTube channel. Um, he does make some very entertaining videos. In fact, he's made some of my favourite ever World of Warships videos, and I suspect the same is true for you guys as well. I've met him once. It was in St. Petersburg, at the first World of Warships Community Contributors Summit. He's a really nice guy. But when he sent me this replay, he did ask that I not disclose his identity, because this account, going under the name of Sputnik5, is one of his EU server accounts, and at the moment at least, nobody on the EU server knows who Sputnik5 really is. And so that does allow him to play without being bothered in chat, or harassed by starstruck teammates or enemies. Now, while he did say that he didn't want me to blatantly out his identity in this video, he did say that I was allowed to tease and offer the occasional clue. And I thought, well, that sounds like fun. And so that's what I'm going to be doing. Well, not now. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> give it a chance. <laughs> Allow the battle to at least develop. Speaking of which, uh, Sputnik 5 in the Japanese premium tier 8 heavy cruiser, the Atago. Which was unique amongst cruisers that weren't tier 9 or 10 in that it has a heel. And in fact this was the ship that was given as compensation to everybody who owned the Kitakami when that was removed from the game many, many years ago. It has since gone on sale in the premium shop. But it does mean that with the sole exception of the USS Atlanta, this is the oldest premium ship in the game. Unlike the USS Atlanta, which I used to love, but with the successive changes to the game mechanics of World of Warships, now completely sucks, the Atago has aged remarkably well and is still a very good ship. The Atago did actually exist. It was a development of the Miyoko class of heavy cruisers. It was armed with 10 8-inch guns. It was faster than any of the heavy cruisers that it was expected to face. Relatively strong armour for this type of ship. Decent anti-aircraft firepower and some excellent torpedoes. Of course, having efficient anti-aircraft guns in real life doesn't mean a thing here in World of Warships where nobody has efficient anti-aircraft guns and the Atagos in particular are pretty bad. And what the hell is going on with the... Okay, wow, the Blisovich is dead. Oh, it's time for our first clue as to the actual identity of Sputnik 5. So did any... Actually, I think it's probably easier to ask if anybody didn't get it. <laughs> Alright, you know, I did my best. I don't have access to the same plugins and overlays as he does, but I don't think that was too bad. If anybody doesn't get it by now, you probably never will. If that wasn't enough to give away who it is that we're actually watching here, you've probably never seen any of his videos. In which case, you need to... Well, yeah. In which case you need to go and see some of his videos, but since I'm not actually allowed to specifically tell you who this is, that's going to be very difficult for you, isn't it? <laughs> Just going to have to trust me, you're missing out. Anyway. Oh, that Miyoko's showing an uncomfortable amount of skirt, and he does have armour piercing loaded. Unfortunately, he was kind of robbed, although we managed to do some damage, and knocked out, I think, at least, one of the Miyoko's guns. Now, the Atago has torpedoes with a 10 kilometer range. He's clearly not going to hit the Miyoko with them, unless the Miyoko does an about turn and sails back the way he came, and that's not completely out of the question. I've seen people do dumber things than that. But just because he can see a Miyoko and a Nuremberg doesn't mean that they're the only two ships there. Now, while the Atago does have very powerful armament, it's armed with 10 8 inch guns, it does have a very slow reload. 16 seconds. So you can see him thinking about shooting at the Akatsuki over there. But then the Akatsuki starts melting under the combined firepower of the Fubuki and the Nuremberg. So he thinks, we are waste of my firepower. Unfortunately, the Fubuki goes down and the Nuremberg suddenly becomes very uninterested in continuing to shoot. 
We get some more torpedoes away. The Akatsuki has not only survived, he's managed to go undetected. Somewhat understandable, he does kind of have his own hands full here, but, well, somebody needs to sink that Japanese destroyer, and if nobody else is going to do it, although the Lexington has a go, and misses. <laughs> yeah. And there we go, our first kill, and not before time, because the team have lost two destroyers and a cruiser of their own. Although this kill is immediately followed up by the Akazuki on the far side of the map in Cap Circle Delta, getting a torpedo kill on the enemy Fabuki. Speaking of torpedo kills, what about the torpedoes that uh, Sputnik 5 launched earlier? Oh, there's the Nuremberg that was annoying him earlier, and I thought he was going to survive this and only take the one torpedo, but he accelerated when he should have slowed down and he managed to run into two of them. So that's another kill, and it's even the kills, even if it hasn't even the scores, because the enemy team have two of the caps. Sputnik's team only have one, although the Akazuki on the far side of the map who just sank the Fubuki is doing his level best to try to flip capture circle Delta, and even if he doesn't manage to successfully take it, he's at least denying it to the enemy for now. Sputnik was undetected, but he's managed to get spotted by the enemy cargo's aircraft, although they are flying into the middle of some concentrated AA from four or possibly even five ships, so they don't last too long, and he's managed to go undetected again and set yet another fire on the enemy Bismarck on the far side of the island. The Bismarck, unfortunately, is not an idiot. It's just a single fire, he's letting it burn, it's not going to kill him, and his damage repair party can heal back 100% of the fire damage. On the other side of the map, the Akazuki has managed to flip capture point Delta, although the team have just lost a battleship, the Bayern. Over on this side of the map, in stark contrast, Sputnik is still very much leading from the front, with the friendly New Mexico, Ismail and North Carolina cowering under his petticoats several kilometres to the rear. I wonder how many of them are running the dead eye skill. He's basically just biding his time here, sailing around in circles and manoeuvring, using the Atago's exceptionally good speed for a heavy cruiser to avoid any incoming enemy fire. And the good news is that now the Cyclone is beginning to close in, so spotting range is decreasing. High explosive loaded, more shots out against the Ismail, who appears to have extinguished a single fire. So if these 8-inch high explosive shells can start another one, it's party time. And of course, only one of them hits, and it shatters. <laughs> Great. The enemy Miyoko appears to be in a lot of trouble, so the rear turrets unload. It's only four shots. But the Miyoko has just a... you're kidding me. That was seriously unlucky. But the torpedoes might be able to do what the 8-inch guns couldn't. It's assuming the Miyoko survives, and it is coming under concentrated fire, so he leaves the Miyoko to his teammates, although you saw what happened when he did that earlier with the Akatsuki. If you need a job doing properly, you pretty much have to do it yourself. But he could pretty much see that the Miyoko was going to take one of those torpedoes, so he unloaded at the Arizona instead. And of course the Arizona isn't Russian, so it doesn't have decks that can bounce 8-inch high explosive shells. Meanwhile, the team have just lost to New Mexico and Capture Point Delta was being flipped, but the friendly Amagi, who's managed to beach himself on the easternmost of the two central islands, kills the Talon, clawing back some of the points and preventing the cap, momentarily at least, from continuing to be flipped. But the enemy Vladivostok immediately pushes into Cap Circle Delta, and with the Amagi pinned up against the island like that, the Vladivostok has a nice big fat juicy Japanese broadside to unload his 16-inch armor-piercing shells into. So there's a bit of a brown alert going on for the Amagi over there, and he's going to do extremely well to survive that. Meanwhile, the Benson is still lurking next to the central islands. He just got spotted momentarily. Sputnik is now even further forward. And the two battleships on this flank are now even further to the rear. The Nuremberg, very wisely, is keeping his distance. He is just a tier 6 light cruiser, after all, and an exceptionally fragile one at that. Sputnik 5, meanwhile, realising that the team are 150 points behind and somebody's going to need to start sinking even more enemy ships if they're to have a prayer of turning this around, has firmly ejected any shits that he had remaining and is advancing even further north up the western flank. 
Seems kind of brave, but there is actually a method to his madness. Because the cyclone has closed in, visibility has dropped to 8 kilometers, so he's able to cross this open stretch of sea without being spotted. Which means that even if that Benson over there in that extremely angry looking smoke screen was not inside an extremely angry looking smoke screen, he would actually still be too far away to spot Sputnik advancing across this stretch of open water on the western flank. He dumped some torpedoes into the smoke screen, which is actually kind of risky because if you look at the map, the battleships appear to have found their W key and are moving up. But with a 10 km torpedo range, they should actually be okay. They should run out of steam before they pose any kind of threat to Allied shipping. But in any case, the friendly Ismail, who's taken the lead and is therefore at most risk from those torpedoes, has just been blown out of the water by the Bismarck, which means that the North Carolina, who was following the Ismail, has now gone to brown alert and is going to spend the next couple of minutes cowering behind the island just to his north. And oh look, there's the Arizona, and there's the Benson. The Arizona, with his guns all pointing in the wrong direction, I have no doubt is probably not yet even aware that there's a tier 8 Japanese heavy cruiser roving up his jacksy. <laughs> Although, the realisation is probably starting to dawn on him right now. He starts to swing about to port, which means those torpedoes are almost certainly going to miss. That's the bad news. The good news is, that means that his guns are going to take even longer to turn around and start to fire at Sputnik. But that was only one set of torpedo tubes. The Atago has four, two on each side, each of which are capable of launching four extremely dangerous torpedoes. And there is absolutely no way, none whatsoever, that an Arizona is going to outrun an Atago. In fact, the biggest problem here, as he continues to overhaul the Arizona, is that he's going to run into torpedoes launched by the Benson. But the Benson has to be very careful, because he doesn't want to hit the Arizona. And the Benson's just gotten spotted. And bracketed by torpedoes like that, he's not in any rush to go anywhere. Which means he's pretty much a sitting duck. Sputnik is now being attacked by the Arizona, who's about to die. The Ismail, the Benson and the Karga. And as he nails the Arizona, it's time for another clue as to its identity. you know who it is yet? <laughs> Come on, you must have it by now. Oh, he didn't kill the Benson. That's going to be unlucky. Or at least it will be if the Benson has any torpedoes left. But the rear turrets answer that question. And there goes the second wind talent, which is the only thing that's going to keep him alive over the course of the next few seconds. At least long enough to get the remaining torpedoes away from one launcher, because one just got knocked out, and there goes the Ismail. So he's nailed the Arizona. He's nailed the Benson. He's nailed the Ismail. Now, unfortunately, he's completely at the mercy of the cargo. Yes, the fun police are here, and they're here in force. Yeah, it's no good looking back there for help, mate. They're all dead. <laughs> the enemy Bismarck pushed to the south, killed the North Carolina as he was cowering in fear behind the island, uh, forced the Nuremberg to run for his life. Although the enemy Bismarck is now suffering kind of the same problems that Sputnik is. Well, not exactly the same situation. He is coming under attack from the friendly Lexington. But the friendly Lexington at least has the sense to not just sit there in open water getting shot at. He is at least attempting to get the hell out of there. That's not something that we can say about this cargo who's just sitting there. Almost challenging Sputnik to do his worst. On the other hand, to be fair to the cargo, he did just reduce Sputnik to 2,000 health. And if not for the fact that the second wind talent, courtesy of earning the Kraken Unleashed award for five kills, and having Isoroko Yamamoto as your captain activated, providing a much needed heal, and the fact that the Atago has a heal of its own, he'd be dead by now. No question about it. And it's almost certainly this that leads to the cargo's overconfidence, although not without reason when you see what happens when a Japanese heavy cruiser unloads 8-inch armour piercing right into his flat broadside. In fact, we're going to slow down so we can examine this in greater detail. Seriously? Fuck aircraft carriers. Oh, he did just fuck the aircraft carrier. Fantastic. Kill number 6. Oh, my mistake. Kill number 7. Don't celebrate just yet, Sputnik, though, will you? Just because you've managed to kill the enemy carrier doesn't mean you're safe. The Karga is still entirely capable of doing what the Lexington has just done to the Bismarck. 
Except not this time. And if you haven't figured out who this is by now, quite frankly, you don't deserve to know. Oh, hang on a second. <laughs> He's not done yet. The cargo's coming in again. Seriously. So, how many attacks is this from a dead ship? Honestly, in all the excitement, I've kind of lost count. And we're good. Oh, wait. No, we're not. <laughs> Is it over? Is he finally safe from death at the hands of a ship that he sank nearly two minutes ago? I do think he is. Aircraft carriers a perfectly balanced class. <laughs> With no exploits. Right. Well, there's only one enemy ship left. It's the Vladivostok, who's managed to successfully uh, kill the Amagi and flip Cap Circle Delta. The team are still 200 points behind. They still only have one Cap Circle. Well, Sputnik is at least in a position, while he catches his breath, to do something about flipping one of those caps, and he's about 27 seconds away from managing to do that. It would be real nice if the rest of the team were capable between them of killing that Vladivostok. And honestly, that should be simple. There's an Akazuki who is never going to get outspotted, or should never get outspotted by the Vladivostok. And he's obviously also being harassed from the air by the Lexington, who did just pretty much solo kill a Bismarck. Um, and is keeping the Vladivostok spotted, even if the Akazuki wasn't capable of shadowing him, and absolutely should be. All of which means Sputnik really shouldn't have to do any more. But there's what you shouldn't have to do, and then there's what you, in fact, actually have to do, because the Vladivostok is sailing away from the Akazuki, which means that the Akazuki's torpedoes have a lot of catching up to do. What the Akazuki should be doing right now, because the team is 200 points behind, and there's only three minutes of this game left, is flipping Cap Circle Delta as the Vladivostok runs away from him. But he's doing his level best to avoid doing that. I don't know if he's waiting for the Lexington's aircraft to take the cap for him, but he's definitely not in any rush to get into that Cap Circle. Actually, it's possible, it's maybe even likely that I am being slightly too harsh on the Akazuki here. He is at least one of the only other members of the team who's actually sunk anything. He was responsible for flipping Delta earlier. And the Akazuki is not the stealthiest of Japanese destroyers, so he's keeping a safe distance. It wouldn't do to die and hand the enemy team even more points. But it does mean that Sputnik's heavy lifting is not quite over. Fortunately, all of the Vladivostok's guns are pointing in the direction that he knows the destroyer is chasing him from. Which means that for the moment at least, until the Vladivostok gets its guns swung around, Sputnik is relatively safe. But he only has 7,000 health, and that's a Vladivostok. And since he quite clearly cannot see the Akazuki, who is sheltering behind an island and shooting at him, and we know this, because the Akazuki cannot see the Vladivostok. That means that Sputnik is the only thing that the Vladivostok can actually aim its guns at. And the thing about the Vladivostok is it's armed with 16-inch guns that are a lot more accurate than those found on its predecessor at Tier 7, the Sinop. Oh, that very, very nearly... This has got to be... <laughs> Oh god, he's shooting again. <laughs> no, slow, slow, slow and turn, slow and turn. Nicely dodged. Of course, all three of his high explosive shells have shattered because he's shooting at a Russian battleship. <laughs> oh, he has managed to set a fire as the Vladivostok returns fire. But that's a fire which the Vladivostok, for reasons known only to himself, refuses to do anything about, handing Sputnik 5 his seventh kill. Sputnik old son, after a carry of those proportions I highly recommend you go and have yourself a nice lie down and rest that back of yours. And in fact he tells me that that is exactly what he did. <laughs> I honestly can't say I blame him. I think I'd need a lie down after playing a game like that. 
you know, if I was even capable of playing a game like that, which of course I'm not. So I'd love nothing more than to say, and if you like this, you should go and check out his YouTube channel, but I'm still not allowed to tell you exactly who this is, although I suspect the majority of you have probably figured it out by now. And if you have, for the benefit of those who haven't and are curious, please feel free to post whatever links you like in the comments section down below. In the meantime, I do hope you enjoyed this video, because it was pretty impressive. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.